Merhabalar. So this part of my bookshelf in this library tour video, this part of my bookshelf actually isn't like an organized subject. It's usually, I have these parts of my shelf where I keep books for research, uh, for writing other books. And so that's what this shelf is. So it's going to be a little bit all over the place, although the book is kind of unified by uh, psychology and philosophy. So the first book, Sub Personalities, uh, is about the idea of having a distinction between someone's, um, let's say, superficial personality or like the personality that's present and like an unconscious personality that they might not be aware of or just some kind of unconscious aspect of who they are that shapes their sub-personality. It's like an old uh, Freudian psychology book, you could say, psycho psychoanalytic book. And their right minds. Uh, this is basically a book about the psychology uh, and the lifestyle of a lot of famous writers and poets and artists. And it talks about um, the left brain and the right brain distinction uh, and how that played out in their lives. And so this will be a fun book to read. Psychotherapy of the Disorders of the Self. I thought the name of this book was so bad, but uh, again, this is going to be... I wanted to read this as a way to talk about um, dysfunction in a person's life, and that's why I got this book. I wanted to talk about it from like a philosophical perspective, and looked at like all the different consequences on one's existence as a result of having uh, psychopathology or something of that sort. So that's what this book is for. The Denial of Death. Um, I have three, read three books on death now. And I want to read this one because I believe, again, it's a psychoanalytic approach, which it's not going to be super scientific if it's psychoanalytic, but it tends to be the case that psychoanalysts are a little bit more creative, I believe, and so therefore I like to read them. Um, this book looks at like death as a uh, almost like a protective instinct or a way of coping, um, and that we make these very abstract systems, like these philosophical uh, beliefs about death because we're scared of it or it's a defense mechanism, it's a coping mechanism. Um, Freud particularly thought that religion was a coping mechanism for death. Um, he analyzed some of the prayers in Christianity and found that like a lot of it's about making sure your loved ones are better and he thought that was a coping mechanism. Uh, Against Empathy. This is basically a book about how uh, empathy can lead us to biased thinking or irrational thinking and he basically argues in this book that rational compassion as he calls it or just being compassionate by using reason as opposed to being compassionate by being empathetic he argues for that in here and I think there's some truth to that but um, I mean you'll have to read the book yourself and see, see how you feel about it I, I like the book it was, it was a good book the Body Keeps the Score. I haven't read this yet. I know it's like a really popular book all over Bookstagram and the self-help community has really uh, sunk their teeth into this book. Uh, I believe the premise of the book is how trauma shows up in the body. And yeah, that's about, that's the extent of what I know. I'm gonna be honest, the real reason why I bought this book wasn't because I wanted to read it, but because I was in a bookstore and I felt like I didn't have enough books in my hand, and I said, you know what, let me just buy this one too. <laughs> so, uh, think of that what you will. Uh, religion Explained, The Evolutionary Origins of Religious Thought. So this is a super cool book. Um, it basically provides like cognitive models uh, about how religion e evolved through cognition, how these kinds of beliefs are uh, adaptive, and that's, yeah, that, that was super cool. Uh, I think a lot of people who are atheists would enjoy this book. And maybe even if you're not an atheist, you might enjoy this book. But if you're into evolutionary psychology, then definitely pick this book up. The Psychopath, Emotion, and the Brain. I haven't read this yet. Uh, I, my, one of my favorite areas in psychology is abnormal psychology, which means you study personality disorders, um, diseases like schizophrenia uh, and psychopath I don't believe is a term used anymore if I'm not mistaken I believe that's not a term used anymore and they just clustered sociopath and psychopath under antisocial personality disorder I'm not sure if I'm remembering that correctly 
Uh, it's been a while since I've picked up a DSM book, but yeah, that, I just wanted to study psychopaths, so I got a book. I got this book. I'm gonna get more because obviously this book is a bit dated, I think, um, and so there's probably new research. But yeah, that's why I got that book. Sigmund Freud, Totem and Taboo, obviously a classic. Freud writes pretty well, despite his ideas being loose. I think his writing style is nice. I think he he takes there's a there's a certain aesthetic, a certain aesthetic uh, to uh, Freud's writing, um, even though it's armchair psychology, and I enjoy it, and so therefore I like to read it. Uh, this book is just about society and, and taboos inside society. Lolo May, The Meaning of Anxiety. Uh, this is actually a book I picked up thinking it was going to be like more existential, kind of like philosophy. And it's actually a very rigorous analysis of anxiety. It's a very empiricism heavy book. I haven't read it yet, but uh, I'm looking forward to reading it. Yeah. He's a famous writer. Oops. He's a famous writer as well. Uh, neuroexistentialism. So obviously I picked this one up because I wanted to look at like, what neuroscience has to say about existence. Not just what neuroscience can tell us about the brain, but how our lives should be impacted by um, neuroscience. And yeah, that, I mean, the, the cover alone should tell you. <laughs> Meaning, morals, and purpose in the age of neuroscience. <clears throat> Super cool topic. Existential psychotherapy. Uh, this guy was a big influence on Jordan Peterson, and in fact, this guy came from an era of thinking that was uh, like existential, I don't know what they call it, therapy. Um, and you can tell that this, this era had a big influence on Peterson by looking at the table of contents, like life, death, and anxiety, the concept of death in children, death in psychopathology. Uh, there's a whole, I, think, I believe there's a whole section about responsibility, yeah. So responsibility, responsibility as an existential concern, responsibility avoidance, clinical manifestations. Uh, this era of psychotherapy was really big on responsibility and purpose. And if you've read any of Jordan Peterson's books, it's all about responsibility and purpose. Okay. Umberto Eco, uh, Language uh, and Lunacy. I, I don't know much about Umberto Eco. I know he's a famous poet, famous writer, something like this. Uh, but the, since I like language, uh, I had to get this because it's about using language as a creative source. I think he takes, I think the background of the book, unwittingly, like he doesn't know, takes the Horfian hypothesis or like linguistic determinism to be true. And he thinks that the relationship between language and ideas is fixed. Uh, and then explores how creative language can lead to creative ideas as a result of that. Uh, that was cool. What is that? Um, yeah, so that's why I got this book. It should be a fun read. Lolo May again, Power and Innocence. Uh, this is one of his older works, I think. And I believe it's just about the relationship between, yeah, power and innocence. Uh, it's a book about violence, a search for the sources of violence. And I believe it's going to be looking at violence through uh, the relationships of power and innocence. If I'm not mistaken. Hannah Ardent and Violence. This is obviously a classic book. I haven't I haven't read it recently. I, I think this is actually an essay, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, actually, no, I think it is a book. I haven't read this recently. I read it a long time ago. But I want to read it again, which is why I got this copy, this, this book. Um, the copy I read was a library book. And so we'll, we'll have a look at this. It's a famous book, though. Obsession. Um, just a book about obsessions, like obsession in history, obsession in modern times, like people being obsessed with their phones versus being people being obsessed with, I don't know, like their, their little plastic wooden toys or whatever. Uh, where is the table of contents? Okay, well, I can't find it, but yeah, this is just like a really cool book. Again, like abnormal psychology stuff. Deceit and self-deception. Uh, this is all about how we fool ourselves in our day-to-day -day thinking, which, if I guess if you studied, like, I don't know, uh, cognitive psychology, 
and like the nature of heuristics and whatnot and how we actually are like very loose reasoners and we think we're certain despite how loose our thinking is. It's kind of what this is about, but this also goes into like biased memory, uh, stuff like that. Um, yeah, it'd be a fun book to read. This book I'm super excited to read uh, on suicide uh, by Durkheim. This book was the, the book that actually supported uh, religion uh, more than anything else because one of the main insights in this book was that people who gather into religious settings or communities commit suicide less frequently. Um, people who had spiritual purposes uh, committed suicide less frequently. I think, again, for the book I'm writing, which is about like existence, uh, the suicide is uh, one of these areas of existence that's not, not analyzed enough, and so I really wanted to write about it. Um, I also got a commentary uh, on Durkheim, but also that I believe this guy contributes his own original uh, ideas as well. Like I believe he comments on Durkheim, but then has some things to say about suicide as well. Uh, if I'm going to guess what this book is about, uh, what suicide communicates about the nature of your society, your communities, if people in your community are committing suicide, what does that mean? Stuff like that. That would be my guess. Uh, family and individual development. Of course, uh, family is a big part of life, and therefore I wanted to get a book on family. I believe this person is a famous psychologist, uh, so this will be a fun book to read. And I also like the Root Badge series. These are the Root Badge classic books. They're very aesthetic. Love to have them on the shelf. Uh, I'm becoming a person, Carl Rogers. I was going to read this with another bookstagrammer, but I just didn't have the time. And now I'm going to read it as a, a way to write about personhood, about like uh, the stages of becoming a person, and then and maybe when you have like a personality issue when you're becoming a person. That's why I'm going to read this book. I use this book as a research book, but now I want to read the whole thing front to cover. And it is a long book. It's like 600 pages, and it's not 600 pages of nothing, right? It's These are like uh, filled with text, top to bottom, very small margins. So this will be a fun read. Uh, yeah, the Oxford Handbook's really great, by the way. <laughs> um, Oxford Handbook of Value Theory. Uh, obviously, writing about values would be important to understand like, the human existence. So I want to get books on values, and this is one of the books I go to. Um, Any time I want to get introduced to a subject, I either, one, look for an introductory textbook, or look for an Oxford handbook. They're really good at being systematic and providing like, a, a super good introduction. Philosophy of Emotion. Um, Oxford Handbook. Again, this is, it's not that I've never studied emotion before. I have studied a lot of psychology of emotion, but there's a lot of debates about the theories of emotions and where emotions come from. Uh, are emotions social? Are emotions biological? And I haven't been, I'm not familiar with those debates. So that's why I got this book. And hopefully I can get some good ideas from here for a, a chapter in my own book. Yeah, this will be a fun book. Dude. Also, very another big book. Lastly, Anxiety and Related Disorders, uh, Cambridge Handbook. The Cambridge Handbooks are also good, but uh, Oxford Handbooks are better, to be honest. Oxford Handbooks are the best handbooks I've ever come across. Anyways, um, Anxiety and Related Disorders. Yeah, this is just a book about anxiety, different different anxiety disorders or disorders induced by anxiety. Uh, if I could find the table of contents, I could show you. Okay, here we go. Uh, treatment and prevention of anxiety-related disorders, uh, disorders, assessment, diagnosis, and cultural manifestations of anxiety-related disorders, uh, basic mechanisms and fear and anxiety, uh, transdiagnostic processes. Yeah, so this will be a fun book to read, and hopefully it will give me some ideas about anxiety. So that's a research shelf on my bookshelf. With that being said, ciao.